Zach here from Gravel Bike California and Bishop, ready to take on another pilgrimage to the Eastern Sierra. Now, we came back because fall colors are peaking and there's very little places that do it, like Lake Sabrina. There's a lot of spurs up there, so it's good to have the gravel bike if we survive. Let's roll. You're pretty much guaranteed a good time for any trip out to the Eastern Sierra. And obviously best by bike, like those that learned at Mammoth Tough. But you want to play close attention around October when fall colors tend to peak. And there is plenty of information where to find them and even updates when to go down to the week. Bishop carries the distinction as the largest city in Inyo County as well as home to the central landmark Schatz Bakery, whose family has been producing bread for over 100 years, as Vic and I started off on Highway 395, serving as Main Street. Our ride is a 38 mile out and back, where you'll have to power through 5,000 feet of climbing on the way up. Directions are pretty straightforward, staying on Highway 168 for the duration, as the 1907 Dam Middle Fork of Bishop Creek forms Lake Sabrina, creating a terminus, and later plans fell through to connect 168 across the Sierra, ending before Kaiser Pass. After quickly rolling by Bishop City Hall, there's plenty to see in the next three miles, making your way through West Bishop, but it goes by relatively fast as the grade trends slightly up, meaning we might whiz by the edge of the reservation and miss the Paiute Shoshone Cultural Center or indiscriminately ride over the South Fork of Bishop Creek. The anticipated open spaces soon came with still noteworthiness injected, passing the site of Samuel Bishop's St. Francis Ranch established in 1861 but now only noted by this marker. Now turning to the southwest, you're mostly void of any nearby vertical elements, which might make you focus on the geological features. But there are non-recreational activities available, especially if you're into isolated higher learning, also soon passing the last connecting road in Ed Powers, which has an ominous landmark next to it, as the highway also loses most of its shoulder from here on out. But you do get indications of the saturated fall colors ahead. Turning our attention back to the left was another spot of historical significance, sparking us to do a little off-roading, visiting the site of one of the early battles of the Owens Valley Indian War, where the Paiutes sent back an advancing militia with tensions rising in 1862 as the natives dealt with depleted cattle stock by flood and settlers. At about a third of the way up, these large mountains seem to be getting closer. Yet it's the large mountain on the left we'd be ascending as you question progress with a succession of straightaways. But this turn off looked like a future dirt possibility that heads into the buttermilk boulders that traveled here ages ago via glaciers. As we were now formally in the Inyo National Forest and reacquainting ourselves with steering, after crossing Birch Creek that forms the other side of the ridge, our progress with elevation started to show, meaning the first chance to take in the fruits of our labor, getting a look at just a portion of the Owens Valley, putting to work more than just one of our cameras. With 10 miles to go, there was still a majority of grinding left, as we were only passing the 6,000 foot mark. At least seeing other cyclists gave us hope this climb was possible. But seeing how this was a recon mission, it sure looked promising connecting to the buttermilk area below, and even more so if I did a close up of this map, as now the road fell away to the other side with more pronounced vegetation seeing a more stretched out version of the road ahead. This is the definition of a false flat. Yeah. Doesn't bode well for what's up ahead. <laughs> Conversation started getting thin 
as a direct byproduct of the air. But conversely, we're starting to get more colors intensely of the fall variety, soon hitting the junction where you have two great options, which would be great to combine for both on one ride with South Lake sitting 600 feet above Lake Sabrina. With under five miles left, it was hard to believe we were in the home stretch. But the good news was the effort was about to pay off. Finding our fall colors in peak condition, giving us the fall bliss we were looking for. Continuing the magic, the small community of Aspendale sits right beyond, which is the extent where Highway 168 reaches in the winter months, with large homes to the east and the Cardinal Cafe dipping below to the west, leaving us just two miles ahead, but still fall colors abound, soon noticing some indiscriminate dirt turnoff that was the road up over 100 years ago. But the new road was fine by us, with no arguments here saving the best for last, feeling justified on the timing of our trip. Still regrets, I had a few, seeing the dirt off to our right that would have taken us up to North Lake, which was only 300 feet above with a mile and a half climb, but no complaints on finding more reasons to return. Highway 168 actually ends a half mile before Lake Sabrina. But fortunately, not the autumn colors, with the road narrowing, saturating the foliage, and Bishop Creek still maintaining some flow, ending with hues the greatest painters couldn't replicate, and reaching the lake was like an added reward, riding across the top of the dam, giving the opportunity to see the contrast in color, and realizing that morning light would have captured this beauty better, but hey, we were already playing with house money. The scents are something everyone looks forward to if you're right of mind, but some you're eager to do more than others, capsulating this whole climb in under an hour. We made it back to Bishop, fulfilled for making the trek. But when you drive up four hours for a ride, you want a little more payback as we hit the Alabama hills on the return with others like Francisco having the same idea as this was Vic's first trip to this dirt, as well as our new tracking friend bringing a different perspective. No trip would be complete without a visit to the impossibly positioned Mobius Arch as this trip truly rocked, knowing there would be more adventures to come as the Eastern Sierra always delivers. Check off another fantastic ride. A couple notes though, both dealing with timing. One, if you're gonna do it, try going in the morning. That way you can really take in 
the strictness of those fall colors. Second thing, give yourself more time. As you can see, there's tons of other options up there. If you can make a day of it, man, what a camp. Anyways, if you'd like to support us, go ahead, hit the subscribe button, or go to our shop so we can bring you more from the state of dirt.